Hey guys, Clyde here live at Leechburg Lights. Hey, we're in the studio today and I wanted to do a video to kind of help clear up some of the, uh, the, the questions that I've been receiving about calculating the amperage and total power consumption for a basic RGB display. So uh, what I wanted to get into is there's, there's a number of different things that are involved whenever you set up a display. But I think the biggest part of setting up a display, it doesn't necessarily mean building the elements or uh, putting the lights on the house or synchronizing the lights with the music. I think the, the biggest challenge is the actual pre-setup, which is mostly done on paper. And you have to do this in order to know exactly the items that you need to purchase in order to create the display in the way that you would like to. So I want to go through this, uh, this presentation here in PowerPoint here and uh, go over a couple things about why, why do we calculate the amps and the voltages. Well, basically what it comes down to is every individual RGB controller is manufactured differently. Each of these controllers, which these are, this is the original 27 channel controller I started with, you know, roughly uh, three years ago, and its maximum amp per board, you can run a maximum of 15 amps on this controller. Now, there's rumors saying that, that you can run actually a lot higher on it, but uh, I've never tested it, I never tried it out, I never found a reason to because a lot of my elements never got close to the one amp maximum that I wanted to run per the individual output. So uh, this is the 27 channel controller, the 36 channel over here, and then down here is the 30 channel. These two are the new ones that I really started getting into and playing with a lot this year. And uh, very happy with those as well. And then I have this one over here. This is a 24 channel board. I used this for Halloween with my 5 volt dumb RGBs uh, because it had that, that 5 volt there to 24 volts. It was a little different uh, and it had, the, it had the same maximums. It had 1 amp per channel and since there's 24 channels per board it could go up to a 24 amp maximum. So the other consideration that we need to, to think about is the power supply. Uh, this is a, a picture of the original, one of the original dumb RGB controllers. Uh, what I did here was I added another small uh, three channel controller here and, and made it 10 channels actually. And I have one power supply that runs uh, all 10 channels in this, or 10 outputs in this controller box. Um, and it, th this is a 12 volt power supply. There's some other things that you need to know too is what's the maximum wattage that you can use from this power supply. You can't just connect a min, uh, uh, an unlimited number of RGBs into a uh, DC uh, and, uh, and into a DC power supply and and uh, run everything off of one. You you have to consider what the maximums are. The other thing too that you'll learn as you go through, you can look at the power supply and the the amps and the watts basically are one calculation or another. And these are the maximums that you really need to be very aware of whenever you're doing your calculations. So we'll get back into the power supply in a little bit. But first of all, I wanted to go over some of the basic types of dumb RGBs. Now, I've done another video on uh, the difference between dumb RGB and pixels. And suffice to say, a pixel and a dumb RGB are relatively identical except for the method at which data is sent out to the light or to the LED. When we're talking about dumb LEDs or dumb RGBs, we're talking about the individual LED itself, this little node, this little light. And these here are modules, these little square modules. Since there's four of these LEDs on one module, that means it's going to consume a little more power than, say, one bullet node over here. And that this module here is going to run, the square module is going to run a little bit more power than these three LEDs right here, which uh, uh, are going to run just a little bit more than this bullet node. Then we have a whole strip of RGBs, everything all hooked up to one continuous line. Now, uh, I typically don't use these in my display. Uh, they're a little, for me, they're a little bit more challenging to work with. I prefer the look of the Christmas light and the mini light, so I like the bullets. So, how do we find the specifications of the RGBs? Well, this is where we have to go, and we have to depend on who we purchase from and what their website says. So, uh, let me go over to my uh, 
trusty little uh, Ally Express page here and what I've got here this is a sample page from Ray's website and these are some of the dumb RGB nodes that I'm running and there's a hundred count here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look in the specifications of these dumb RGBs and we're gonna notice a couple numbers under the specification heading if we read here's his number the color this is RGB changeable he calls it dump uh, I call it dumb or basic and then it tells you the LED quantity uh, per uh, one piece is a is an eight millimeter round hat that's the bullet the bullet node the, the light bulb at the top and it's 0.24 watt RGB LED so the input voltage we have here is 12 volt so now we have pretty much the basic idea of what we need to do our calculations we see 0.24 watt that means that the maximum power that one dumb RGB node one dump node from Ray is going to uh, from this set because every set isn't created equal every uh, every node on this set is 0.24 watts now I think if we go a little further here or if we look in a different place it might actually tell us it's 24 there it is wattage it says 24 watts total that means at 100 nodes which is what this set is we have 100 nodes at 24 watts and they are 12 volt, volt nodes each node one, 100 24 watts divided by 100 uh, bulbs is equal to 0.24 watts so with that in mind let's go back into our presentation and let's do some calculations using that 0.24 as our individual watts so once again we take our node count the total nodes we have 100 nodes we multiply that by our watts and that's uh, that's 0.24 watts and that gives us our total watts and then from there we take our total watts and we divide by our volts which we know is 12 volts and then that gives us our amps so here's our formula if you want to stop and write this down this is probably one of the most important formulas you'll ever need to use whenever you are dealing with uh, calculating your voltages so let's go back into this 100 count set is equal to 24 watts total we took that right off of Ray's site here's the example of our calculation using that number the 100 count at 24 watts at 12 volts let's do the math and actually figure this out so if we take our total watts and divide by our t our volts that they consume with we figure out that we get two amps for a total draw so 24 watts divided by 12 volts is equal to 2 amps now that doesn't that doesn't mean that um, that your total pull out of one channel is 2 amps this is remember this is three colors we have R G and B on here and with that R G and B you're you're looking at three individual channels so we need to take this number here again and let's divide it down by three channels and when we do that we get 0.66 amps per individual RGB channel what this does for us is this gives us 0.66 amps per channel and let's multiply that out by let's say my original 27 channel controller and that equals 17.82 amps we must use caution when connecting to different controllers remember that my 27 channel controller that I've had for three years can only handle a maximum of 15 amps this is over that set by a whole 2.82 amps so if I were to run nine strings 900 RGB's off of my 27 channel controller then I would be pulling too much power and I could risk having a fire in my controller housing because of the overdraw on amps now as I said before I don't get anywhere near that large of account with my dumb RGB controllers so for me it's not a concern but for new people trying to get as much out of a board that they can that's where the specifications are important to know for each individual board so when you're looking at purchasing a board this is one of the things that you really need to consider when you're looking for an RGB controller how many LEDs are you going to run off of them how many nodes or how many how many LEDs are you gonna run and then what are the maximums and what 
are the ratings for each of those uh, different LEDs. So I want to do another uh, RGB example here. This is my uh, RGB window frames. I've I've had uh, I spent last year I did redid all my window frames and drilled uh, the nodes through the PVC frames and they look gorgeous this year. I absolutely I, I'm thrilled with them. One of my favorite parts of the house now is the windows. But I what I did was I found out that I used a rough average of 44 RGBs per window frame. Remember each node is 0.24 watts and 0.24 watts times 44 equals 10.56 watts. What that comes down to is 10.56 watts divided by 12 volts is equal to 0.88 amps. Now if we take that 0.88 amps and we divide that by the three channels on the controller we get a total of 0.293 amps per RGB channel. So basically I'm I'm only using 44 nodes on one of my dumb RGB uh, 27 channel controllers. The last calculation example I want to do is a form uh, is the is for the RGB strips. Once again here's our formula total watts divided by volts is equal to your amps. So we're on uh, Ray's site here and this is the strip that I was uh, gonna go through here and talk about and as I look at some of the uh, descriptions, the product descriptions here I see that the operating voltage here it says 12 volts the LED power it says 36 watts total and then it says 7.2 watts per meter. So the last thing we don't know is the total quantity of LEDs. So here is the LED quantity which is 30 LEDs per meter. Um, let's do a little bit of quick math. Where's my calculator? And let's, I just want you to see this. You have 30, watts, uh, 30 LEDs and then you have a total of uh, 5 meters and I know that's a simple number to come up with but that's 105 total LEDs and if we figure it out at 36 watts we go back in here at 36 watts let's take 36 watts and divide it by that 150 this will give you a very familiar number that we were used to using earlier in the day this will give you a very familiar number that we used in the earlier example so once again that's another reason why I enjoy sticking with uh, Ray's products because you get that consistency between the uh, the um, the manufacturer specification on the LED note so let's go back to our example now with RGB's you're looking at a uh, number of RGB's per meter if you just take one meter and you multiply it out it's 7.2 watts per meter let's go ahead and calculate it out and we find that we have uh, 7.2 watts divided by 12 volts equals 0.6 amps this is our formula watts divided by volts equals amps and we have 0.6 amps divided by three channels that because once again your entire watt or your entire amps is split among three channels so average averaging remember you're dividing so you're getting an average the average red channel is using 2 amps the average blue channel is using 2 and the average green is using 0.2 amps as well so that come that that comes to your total of 0.6 amps so what does this mean when we're calculating our amps and our voltages our amps are our, our total amps when we're trying to build our controllers and set our controllers up for use in our display well we already know that our power supply is a maximum of 30 amps but our controller possibly our 36 channel controller maxes out at 36 amps so you have to be careful you have to consider what power supply you're using and how many amps it, it can handle versus what controller you're using and how many dumb RGBs you're going to run off of them you have to be careful don't try and run 36 amps of LEDs or RGB nodes off of the 36 channel controller if your power supply is only a 30 amp power supply this is the standard or typical uh, uh, inexpensive power supply that you might find on Ray's site or find it on Amazon these are running for roughly 22 23 24 dollars shipped to your house um, but there are other power supplies that you can purchase that have 
uh, let's say a, a 400 watt maximum or a 35 or a 40 uh, 40 amp maximum uh, draw that you can actually connect one power supply up to the controller and it can do a significantly larger amount of power uh, uh, to run the, the uh, LEDs. So the power supply must match the power consumption from the computer from the controller and that's the basic lesson that I really wanted you guys to get from this. So now that we have a good solid understanding of what it takes to uh, calculate our usages of power into the display uh, I wanted to take a walk around my display and show you what I have all running on dumb RGB controllers and it's pretty significant um, I have my windows and my doors my icicles my stars my wreath my tree line my dumb RGB tree line because I have the pixel RGB tree line over here now and I have the mega arch and the train and that's all dumb and you don't see the train here but that's all dumb RGB. All of the main stuff that you see lit up right now on the display other than the mega tree and these over here, everything lit up is pretty much my dumb RGB elements. Now, I have to be careful not to over put too many um, too many amps on any output of my controllers. And to do that, this is how I organize. What I did was I created this Excel spreadsheet and using this spreadsheet was uh, very very easy very easy for me to set up but um, but for you you might have to physically sit down and calculate this stuff out for yourself Excel I, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, pretty good with using Excel been using it for 20 25 years now and I've I've, uh, I've come up with my own kind of uh, kind of display setup screen and you can see all these tabs at the bottom I, I'm pretty organized whenever it comes to this um, but you can see how I list every single item, how many nodes they have, and here's the wattage of the bulb, so that's that 0.24, that familiar number that you're used to now, and you see the total watts multiplied out for that number of nodes, divided by our volts gives me my total amps, divided by three channels, which gives me my average per channel, so that I know I'm not going to go over the maximum draw of any of my uh, controllers. Now, this was my original setup two years in 2013 my dumb RGB was uh, pretty much these two uh, the upstairs and the downstairs windows the radio sign the wreath uh, the main wreath and so forth so I'm not running a bunch of RGB nodes on the upstairs now on the downstairs I'm running a significantly larger number uh, you can see my windows uh, my window frames on the left side of the house there's 120 nodes on there my door frame it has 110 nodes so just those alone are my larger uh, amps uh, usages and as you can see and it's kind of cut off there it's 13.62 amps and now I'm using the uh, 27 channel controller for these two controllers and I'm not even coming close to the full maximum of the controller so uh, on a last note this is only an estimation please remember that whenever you're going through and setting up your display that you have to use a multimeter and take an actual reading of uh, and draw of, uh, an actual draw of all the power on the RGB sets that you're going to run. Manufacturer spe specifications vary. Don't just automatically assume uh, that 0.24 is exactly what all RGB and LEDs take to run on any specific uh, circuit. Uh, you have to read the manufacturer specifications for their products. Guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below. I know that there's going to be a whole lot more uh, um, uh, uh, instructional videos I'm going to put out this year. So uh, keep it tuned in here and let me know your thoughts. Thanks a lot. Take care and have a good one.